Welcome to the ChemCAD NXT Essentials Tutorial. The videos in this series give an overview of the ChemCAD NXT Process Simulation Suite. This is the third video in the series, Interpreting Results and Troubleshooting. In this segment, we're going to wrap up the tour of the program interface and build on the simple example from the previous video by adding a recycle stream. We will also take a look at the ways you can interpret and report results from the simulation. Let's begin with a quick review of what we worked on in the previous video. For your reference, that video is titled, Building a Simple Flow Sheet. We have one feed stream with 5 million standard cubic feet per day of natural gas at 77 degrees Fahrenheit and 200 PSIA. We're going to cool the gas and separate the condensing liquids in a simple vertical separator. We started this example with a very basic model to demonstrate the typical workflow for building a new flow sheet in ChemCAD. We followed these nine steps as a recommended workflow. Though this is a good starting point, you're free to start and work in any order you're most comfortable with. Just be aware that you cannot run a simulation without first selecting some components and the thermodynamic selections. When building a new process simulation, it is common to start with a simple representation of what you're trying to model. Let's say you're trying to build a complex process plant with multiple different types of equipment, like separators, columns, pumps, heat exchangers, piping, etc. So if I try to build this entire model in one pass, adding all the equipment and controllers where I think they should go, and once everything's connected and my feed streams and product streams have been added, if I try to run my flow sheet and the model doesn't run, what do I do? I will probably get several messages and warnings. I can start there but I don't necessarily know what's the main issue I need to solve. Are there multiple issues? Where do I start? With so many elements added to the flow sheet, it can be hard to determine. That's why it's best to start simple, run one or two unit operations at a time, and then build up to more complex models from there. In addition to that, early models are rarely well-defined, so we start with what is known, and through our process modeling, we can find the answers we need. With that said, we started with a simple flow sheet and we're now going to add a bit more complexity to our natural gas processing simulation. Note that at this point we have successfully run our previous simulation and the model converged without errors or warning messages. So let's define this process model further. In this simulation we're simply taking an incoming stream, cooling it, and calculating the split of gas and liquid phases. Now I think it would benefit my design to add a second heat exchanger upstream of the first so that I can recycle the cold gas from the top of the separator to cool my incoming hot feed gas stream. To insert a new unit operation into the existing system, right click on the stream where I want to add it and select Insert Unit Op. Then select the unit operation you want to add from the palette. In this case, I want a heat exchanger icon with two inlets and two outlets. This one will work. To add this unit operation, click and hold down the mouse button while dragging the icon to the stream where we want to add it, and then let go of the mouse button. I know I want to eventually add the recycle stream here, but rather than simply rerouting the stream, let's first begin by adding a new inlet and an outlet stream. This is just a handy way to make initial guesses before connecting a recycle stream, especially in more complex simulations, so I'm just going to take a minute to show you how this can be done. So add the feed and product stream arrows and connect them to the heat exchanger. I need to start with an initial guess for the heat exchanger, inlet stream composition, and properties. Since we started with the simplified simulation and ran that to get an initial estimate, I'm just going to start by copying that gas stream that was predicted from the separator gas outlet. To copy stream data from one stream on the flow sheet to another stream, go to Specification and choose Copy Data. And we're going to copy stream 4 to stream 6. Next, we need to specify the new heat exchanger we added. Double click on the heat exchanger icon to open the heat exchanger specification window. I'm just starting out with this design, so I don't really know what my temperature or heat duty requirements will be. I could take a guess here. I know I need to get pretty cold to condense my feed gas stream, which is coming in around 77 degrees Fahrenheit. 
I currently have the downstream exchanger cooling the gas to negative 5 degrees Fahrenheit. So I could just split it down the middle and say I want this heat exchanger to cool my stream to, say, 35 degrees Fahrenheit. The outlet to this exchanger is stream 5, so I'm going to just input 35 degrees here and say OK. Now I want to run the simulation. In this case, I really only want to run this heat exchanger because I know the rest of my flow sheet is working and I just added this new unit operation where I made some guesses for the specifications. So I want to see what the simulation predicts for just my new addition. With the heat exchanger selected, I can either go to Run Selected in the Home tab or just right click this heat exchanger and click Run this unit op. A message box appears with a warning for the unit operation I just ran. The warning says HTXR, that's an abbreviation for heat exchanger, and pinch zone. Click OK to move on. When you're troubleshooting a simulation, the first thing to do is check the errors, warnings, and notification messages that appear here in the messages pane. When I check the errors and warnings tab, I see that there are two warnings. One is a warning that unit op 1 was not calculated at the current inlet conditions. That's expected because I did really only want to run my new heat exchanger and not the others. The second warning says that the program flagged a pinch zone. A pinch zone is a physical limit in heat exchanger design where the temperature difference between hot and cold streams is at a minimum. This means I may not physically be able to make the temperature I defined here happen. Okay, so that means guessing 35 degrees Fahrenheit for my heat exchanger outlet temperature was a bad idea. In process simulation, while you might have some general ideas about a process, there are often a lot of holes that we need to fill before we can solve or converge a simulation. One good way to get a simulation to converge is to allow as much flexibility in our model as possible. We can do this by not specifying absolute values if we don't need to. What I mean by an absolute value is restricting the program to calculate a value that equals exactly what we specified. In this case, I specified an absolute value of 35 degrees Fahrenheit for the heat exchanger temperature outlet. And based on my pinch zone calculation, that might be physically impossible. We can allow more flexibility in our simulation by choosing relative specifications where possible. This would allow the solution to be within a range of values and can adjust when the process conditions change. In our example, it's not that important to me to know what this temperature is because I know that my second heat exchanger is going to be designed to cool the stream to the desired final temperature. Let's see what other options we have available. I know that my feed stream is gas and I don't need this exchanger to cool below the feed gas dew point so I could just specify a vapor fraction of 1 at the outlet of this heat exchanger which is stream 5. This gives ChemCAD the flexibility to calculate the outlet temperature relative to the composition and process recycle conditions and not to some absolute temperature that I specify. So now when I click OK and run this unit off again, the simulation is able to solve. No errors. Before we move on, I want to mention another essential part of troubleshooting, and that is to check important streams to your calculation before moving forward. Even if the simulation converges without or errors or warnings, it can still have some suspicious or incorrect answers, so it's always a good idea to look around and see what the simulation is predicting. Ideally, before you start modeling a process, you would have some idea about the process behavior or expected boundaries, maybe from experimental data or previous experience. If not, we can use our engineering judgment. When relating these calculated values to real life, I ask myself, do these values make sense? Let's check the calculated values for the heat exchanger. Double click the heat exchanger to open the dialog and go to the miscellaneous settings tab. The calculated results are displayed in the gray boxes. You might notice that not all the boxes have calculated values in them. And that's because there are other specifications we could have added for a heat exchanger calculation. For example, heat exchanger area or a heat transfer coefficient. ChemCAD is designed to offer enough flexibility so that whether you are in the early stages of simulation and you don't have all the information yet, you can still run calculations on what you do know. However, if you do have more information, ChemCAD is robust enough to run the detailed calculations. 
In this case, I don't see any unreasonable calculated values, so I'm going to go ahead and move forward. Now that I'm able to converge my full simulation, I'm ready to add another layer of complexity, my recycle stream. To add my recycle stream, I'm going to delete stream 6, that's the inlet to the heat exchanger I added, and replace it with the vapor outlet for my separator. I can reroute my separator outlet stream by clicking on the stream and choosing Reroute Stream. This will allow me to hover over the heat exchanger inlet node until I see the anchor, and I can click to connect the stream here. Now that the recycle stream is connected, you see one of the streams in the flow sheet turn from black to red. What does a red stream mean here? Well, ChemCAD flags cut or tear streams as red. If you're new to process simulation, recycle streams are sometimes referred to as cut or tear streams. That's because the program algorithm has to consider the stream split along some point, where there's an initial guess of X, and the program calculates around the flow sheet until it returns to the recycle point where it compares, let's say, X1 and X2. If the calculated X2 matches the initial guess X1, then the simulation is converged. If X2 and X1 do not match, then there needs to be a new guess, and the program will iterate until there is a match, meaning the simulation has converged. ChemCAD attempts to automatically select the best cut stream to ensure the calculations can run smoothly. However, you can always change the stream that's selected as a cut stream to something that makes more sense to you. If we want to choose a different stream to be the cut stream, select the stream you want to make the cut stream by clicking on it and go to the specification tab in the command ribbon. From here, under Cut Streams, choose Select. I choose this Recycle Stream as my Cut Stream. I'm confident I can Recycle Stream 4 for this simulation because I just ran that configuration with that clone of Stream 4 and my simulation converged. So now I can click Run All here, and we see that the simulation has converged. So let's check on our results. There are several different options to view results in ChemCAD. Let's look at a stream property report. To do this, right click, stream report, and choose stream property. ChemCAD makes a new tab with stream properties. You can move back to your flow sheet using these tabs at the bottom of the flow sheet. I can view the same report in a different format, for example, using Excel by going to the Report Viewer drop-down menu and choosing the format I prefer. I can also change what I see in the Stream Property table by going to this Property Set Preferences menu found under the gear icon below my Property Set drop-down menu. My Stream Property report is a default property set. I can update my default property sets. For example, I can update my stream property compositions to appear as mole fractions instead of mass flow rate. I can also copy or add a new property set with whatever parameters I want to display in my report. I'm going to add a new property set and call it LNG Streams. I'm going to add temperature, pressure, mass flow rate, enthalpy. For vapor streams I want to see standard vapor and for liquid streams I want to see actual liquid. I like to see my components displayed as mole fractions. Now click OK to save. I can see the report for my new LNG streams property set is available as an option in the property set drop-down And when I right click on my stream, it's available in this drop down. When I click on the LNG Streams property set, a new tab opens up with the configuration I just created. My old tab is still open here, and my flow sheet is in this first tab here. I can also display these results directly on my flow sheet. To set up a property table directly on my flow sheet, go to the Drawing tab in the ribbon menu. Under Insert, there are several options to choose from. I'm going to choose the stream box. 
This prompts me to select the streams I want to display. And then I choose which property set I want to display. I can choose my custom property set to display here. When I click OK, I see my property table on the flow sheet and I can drag it around to a good spot. I can also right click and update the style, like change the line thickness or update the font to appear according to my preferences. This is a good stopping point for this simulation. Don't forget to save so we don't lose all this work. If you've made it this far in the ChemCAD Essentials series, You've seen a tour of the program interface, a demonstration of how to build a simple flow sheet from a blank space. We went through the typical workflow from selecting components and thermodynamic settings to specifying the streams and unit operations. And finally, in this video, you've seen how to run the individual unit operations or the entire flow sheet. We saw how to clone streams, how to reroute streams, add a recycle loop, we touched on some tips for troubleshooting a simulation. And finally, we looked at a few different ways to view results and customize these views. This wraps up the Introduction to Process Simulation Essentials in ChemCAD. If you're ready to move beyond these basics, subscribe to the ChemStation's YouTube channel to check out our video library. We also have virtual and in-person courses for ChemCAD. You can sign up through our website, www.chemstations.com.